Hello fellow artists, it's Gianda Monique here, I'm coming in with a check-in for The Artist's Way, week number three, recovering a sense of power, which is nice. Power from within, not power over. So that's my um, goal, path. So, as per usual, with the artist way, um, being a person that helps facilitate the process for other people, it's 50-50. Sometimes the process is very orderly when we work through that book together, and uh, sometimes it just goes off track like mine. Mine always goes off track. It's never um, linear time, so I almost should just call them modules instead of weeks. I might do that, actually, because then that takes less pressure off people that aren't used to that they don't feel like oh I'm behind you're not behind it's just the third part of the course but as a shorthand I'm um, I've just processed week three and have done the exercises uh, I have been writing I've been writing the morning pages haven't done artist dates so much because even though we're social distancing and things are slowly opening back up I don't really I'm not really doing those right now. I'm just kind of like editing those for the pandemic. Whoa. So as I'm talking, because I don't have a tripod, my arm's like, okay, my arm is making this. Um, and there's no steady cam right now, so sorry. But um, these are just challenging times for everybody. I'm not telling you anything new. I've never felt as much community, though, as I have during these times because people are really checking on each other. And I think... We've just all been bogged down by tasks and work and the traditional sense of work and bills and chasing everything that the world literally had to just stop. And we had to 100% check on our health immediately. We had to 100% check on our sustenance immediately. And a lot of things fell apart for most people, even those with means. So it's, it's wild. I'm still on the tail end of things because... Even though I did start receiving some assistance, it's trickling in. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And so it's still paycheck to paycheck, but it's just different. You're expecting a little money to come in, but it doesn't. It's really weird. A little work to come in, and, and the work comes in, but then the payments aren't coming. So it's like... It just really... It just is, you know? There's really no way to describe it, and we probably won't be able to for a long time. And uh, in a way, it's kind of a collective trauma or like a flesh wound or a deep wound. Various wounds in all aspects of life, emotional, financial, physical, spiritual. Um, can't even barely articulate what's going on, still just surviving through it. And uh, whew, Black Lives Matter. I'm just going to repeat this. I did a little video about it earlier, but I'm just going to repeat it. We know all lives matter. That's a given. What we want to make sure that we do is effect equality when you're talking about black lives too. Like make sure that black people are an equal part of that concept to where that's the default and that's a given. And a lot of people and organizations and activists and allies have to work to make sure that the system, that this reflects in the system, because it's just not. And it's been so plain, it's made so clear around the entire world that attention is being called to it. So please, if you can, if you have extra time, resources, anything, please keep funneling your time, your attention, your retweets, your posts, your money, to making sure people understand that Black Lives Matter and Reflect that with action. Do something about it. <laughs> Week three, recovering a sense of power. <sighs> so pairing this back down to the artistic process, because that's really what the process of the artist's way is about. Articulating your, your, your life through creative expression. Um, but art informs life and vice versa. right? But just for me to pair this back down. So, 
songs, of course, have been coming up having to do with all the civil unrest that's going on. I've written a couple songs. I'd stopped writing poems for a while. Um, it just didn't feel time. And uh, how it was working was interesting. Um, when I was with my partner, I was just writing a poem a day for them and posting it. And then, <laughs> and then they broke up with me right before the pandemic by text message, you know, by prose. I was like, oh, okay, well, this is poignant. Um, but they did have that impersonal vibe anyway. They always kind of had this like aloof, elitist, impersonal vibe. And I, I wrote it off and they, they framed it as something else, like stoicism or whatever. But it was, it was, it was different. It took me a while to figure that out. So, I, so that's why I think it's funny now. It's just like, if it's your character and that's your through line, you're not going to do anything different, even if it's with a partner or a family member or anything. You're going to, you're going to stick to that through line. <laughs> Um, so my point was I, I kept writing poetry after they broke up with me, but I just changed it. I made the poems for me on a daily basis and I wrote myself a poem on a daily basis. And it was a private process cause I don't really get much attention for that. You know, people maybe like the picture, but a lot of times they don't even read the poem. So it's, it's just more like a journal for me. <clears throat> but, uh, so, you know, people have been forming support groups around the, um, the pandemic and everything. So I told a couple people that that's what I was doing. I told them the, the history of it. First it was for the partner, and then and it's, there was the hashtags associated with my partner, so I went back and changed all the hashtags and, like, to, to, con to have a context that it's about me anyway. And then I proactively started writing poems about myself. It's hard to write love poems for yourself when you're always working on your self-image, no matter how much you love yourself, you know, there's always these things that make you feel unsure about yourself or like test your self-image. So you're always kind of pushing back on that. Just like, well, wait, no, I'm, I'm equal. I'm good. I'm doing a great job. I'm a wonderful person just like you. There's, there's no greater than or less than here. Um, so writing yourself a, ro a, lo a love poem or romantic love poem every day is real, not just on a whim, but like has a discipline every day. It's really interesting. You have to find things like, or observations about yourself that you wouldn't normally make. So I guess I could call those my artist dates. But anyway, I stopped those around end of May maybe. And um, stopped those for a while. And I just resumed and I'm glad I have. I've been spending a lot of time in nature um, intending to plants and taking care of things. So it's helped a lot. Um, and that's powerful. That generates a sense of power to feel the earth beneath your feet and to exchange oxygen with plants and trees. You feed each other. So that's been really poignant. Um, and it's informed my art, I think. Breath is inspiration. So it's literally like re-inspired me. Um, I had been wanting to write a story for a long time about, how can I say, about these times and how I've been experiencing them. So uh, I did a lot of pre-writing that started around the time that the lockdown started really because the pandemic was in play before the lockdowns so I was just doing a lot of pre-writing while I was searching for work and everything else you know and um just kind of thought well I have to get to this I'll get to this and then ideas would come and they just like, would go and I was fine with that because I was just kind of working on survival as I still am and but then uh, a few days ago, um, so the idea started coming through really strong. And so I added an audio component to it. So now it's an audio book and I have the story. Um, it's online. I'm publishing it online right now, just kind of like a living document. And I'm about, um, last I checked, I think I'm about 16 chapters in. 
and it's a sci-fi and, and fantasy work and um, that had always been intimidating for me before even though I enjoy the genre um, but I just kind of made it real to me and I've had I did so much pre-writing that the characters were real to me and the idea was and so now I'm writing that and uh, it's really been helping me just put some other things in context and it's helping me metabolize these times and um, that's what I do as a coach is I really call on the gifts our ancestors have given to us and our elders have given to us to be creative and to outpicture our lives literally as art and creativity and it's not only an aesthetic thing, even though aesthetics are great and our art and creative expression is great, it's also a healing thing. It's also medicine. And so I'm finally kind of on the other side to where I'm feeling the medicine and it's helping me so much. Um, uh, and the last thing to share, um, just as a check-in, is the last couple of things. Um, I'm confronted regularly, even though lockdown is occurring. I'm just going to leave it in this context. I'm confronted regularly with folks who are maybe activists and maybe allies in a sense, but still very elitist and very classist. Um, even if people don't have means or have less means, they can still be very like elitist in terms of um, class, having a mentality about class or social hierarchies or that type of thing. So I'm regularly encountering um, that kind of mentality and um, allies defending that type of mentality. Uh, you know, people that are more in alignment with justice and um, uh, toppling racial injustice, but still uh, defending um, classist ideas because, oh, well, that person is trying. So, and then just talking to peers about that too. That's a big blind spot people are missing. It's easy to do um, because we use buzzwords like privilege and even buzzwords like classes and, and we use the right buzzwords and wrong buzzwords. We say black lives matter and you know, um, even you know, everyone is subject to it, right? You want to be an ally for trans brothers and sisters and LGBTQ um, IA ally and you, um, you know, you want to reach out to um, Asian brothers and sisters and, and East Asian, you know, just the, the list is on, it goes on and on. You want to be truly conscious about intersectionality. Everyone does need to do the work because we're all living documents, life changes, issues, changes that affect us all. We all need to be striving toward equality. And I think it's just too easy, myself included, it's just too easy to sit back and go, oh, well, I put in the work and I've done all this activist work and I, I give my time or I give my money to X, Y, Z, or this is my viewpoint. Um, it doesn't just end because it's on a piece of paper or it doesn't just end because you have the credentials or you've put in the time. Little things are going to come out. You're going to say ignorant things. People may or may not call you on it. Um, but the class thing is really, is really poignant because it can come out as a, uh, I'm just particular or <laughs> or I you know I just prefer things a certain way things should just be this way There's a lot of like assuming um, uh, which can kind of involve erasing dismissing others um, but anyway it's just it's just interesting it's going to uh, inform my art I'm trying to see how much time I have left on this recording probably not much um, yeah it's just informing my art I'm at, not at a point now where I'm trying to call out anybody or, or work with anybody about that. Because a lot of times people will ask you to do the emotional labor or do the work for me. And it's like a one-time correction. They say, I'm sorry, and they still do the same thing. So I'm going to leave that to the experts and the professionals. Or if I'm doing a workshop and you're asking me that and, you know, um, I'm being paid for it. And we have a structure and I can give you a handout and, you know, we can work one-on-one -on -one and keep diving deeper instead of a one-time band-aid fine uh, but in terms of interpersonal like that's your own work I'm gonna let a person who has a lot more chi to give and a lot more yang energy to really get on the mat with you and deal you know I'm not I'm not buying that sort of lazy thinking of just like oh show me what I did you know teach me like it's not 
we're intuitive beings and we can tell the difference between a fake apology <laughs> and doing the real work. And also, you know, you see this kind of with YouTubers, unfortunately, it's so unfortunate, but it's getting upturned now and it's important. There's one that I really, really love and I hope they come back. But in the past, you know, even YouTubers, okay, and they're creatives, you know, they're creators. And it used to be funny to make the ethnic jokes, funny to make the ethnic jokes and dress in drag and insult women or women of color in a very derogatory way. Um, ha ha. Or minors, make fun of minors. Trolling, I mean, it's still popular, but a lot of people are starting to call others out for that and saying, you know, and even these apology videos that people are making, you still kind of hear the, the, the for some, it's for some of them. Some of them seem very genuinely contrite. You still hear the classist thinking in their apologies. You still hear it. And the, the resentfulness of like, I shouldn't have to apologize. I already apologized, went through this. So everything's just really getting shaken up right now. It's a better time than ever to be creative and use it as a healing tool for yourself, even if you never distribute or publish it. That's how I come up with solutions. And I'm also learning to do so with coding, and I'm also learning to do so with teaching. Um, people teach, hopefully, most of the time, so that they can learn. Um, so every time I lead a workshop or co-lead, I learn so much. And I, I see how much I still have to work on. And I try and get back on the mat and create more art. Um, and more healing for myself and others. And as we heal and uplift ourselves, it naturally reflects with others. I do know we're all doing the best we can. And I'm trying not to live in the anger, but use it more as a fuel. Noticing the inconsistencies and then metabolizing them as I can with the skills I've been provided with as an artist. The skills I'm learning as a coder, um, supporting coders and data scientists who are more advanced than me and are doing the work and using their amazing genius and skill set to help people of color. So it's so hard when you're just surviving to create or be creative or even think about anything aspirational or use your imagination, but imagination can really save you. So I encourage you to take a look into finding solutions by using your imagination taking a very loving inventory of any skills you have that you think maybe are not relevant or helpful or soft skills that you, or hard skills that you maybe don't realize are your skills. Ask friends, ask family, reach out, ask me, you know, reach out to me. I'll help you as much as I can I'll direct you to resources. If you want to work with me as a coach, I'm all, I'm all ears. I'm here for it. I'm also very excited. I'll wrap up with this that, um, you know, I kind of had three business models going on because I do marketing and administrative work and I do meditation and yoga coaching and I do artist coaching. And a lot of times I've been doing um, this work kind of like on three different channels and I haven't really broadcasted into one brand or one idea, but I've been working with some very ho um, helpful folks and getting a lot of hopeful ideas to metabolize everything into one brand, and one effort, so I don't feel as divided and split. And um, I was hesitating with my meditation and yoga because I'm still getting certified, you know, but then I realized, you know, I had taken massage therapy classes before and just trying to experience, you know, the holistic healing side of things and I never got certification. But I did remember that students do teach. All they do is they're just transparent about the fact that they're students. And they have different rates of students, and they make content that way, so I'm really excited. As soon as I kind of get everything coalesced into one box, then I'm going to um, re-enter the world, offering that as well. So it's a scary time. It's a very uncomfortable time, it's, but it's also a hopeful time and a healing time. And I just encourage you to keep reaching out to others. Love yourself. Stay creative. No one's going to get it all right. We're all doing the best we can. Continue to ask questions. To continue to be willing to learn. There are some things that I am keeping really fixed. There are some things I'm not budging on. 
that I have to do for myself having been trampled on for so long. So there are some things that I'm not really flexible with right now. I see a time when I will be bigger and stronger and have more power and breathe into that. And then I will work more with others regarding that, but that's not my work right now. My work right now is to continue to empower myself as I have in this last week and prior and um, continue to love myself, continue to love my art, be less attached to the outcome and more attached to how it helps me heal, listen to my ancestors and my instincts and my friends, my true friends and family, folks who wish me well and use everything. I just keep going back to the Raymond Carver quote and know this. Many others have said it in many other ways, but he wrote so simply and he pared things down and he said, put it all in, make use. That's all, that's global. Um, we are all one good mind. I know that spiritually. And I know that it is all good, ultimately. I know that is spiritually true. Everything blooms and returns to harmony and goodness. I do know that. At the same time, we do have to keep it real about some things. And just as no flower is alike, even if it's like the same type of flower, same type of tree, um, same is true for us. We really have to show up. And keep that humanity top of mind and realize that black lives matter. You know, we're all human. We all matter. We're all spirit. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and reflect that in the black experience. Let's make sure that that reflects equally for everyone. And let's just keep doing the adjustments and the work and um, advocacy to make sure that we see this in our lifetime. We've been asking for it for a long time. It's the same question. The gradualism has been fine, but we're tired of it. <laughs> so um, I'm grateful too that people around the world keep reminding of us of this. We're not sleeping on it. So just keep being honest with yourselves and in art and ask for help in be willing to apply the help that speaks to you in the most harmonious way for all concerned. That's my encouragement for today. I hope, you know, if it, if it affects one person, you know, that's its reward. And sometimes the work is its own reward. I know I go back and look at these things on days when I'm devastated or down and it just changes my whole day, stuff I've created. So that's why I keep returning to the map. That's why I keep returning to the dojo, and that's why I stay creative. Um, so that is my check-in regarding week number three, recovering a sense of power the artist's way. So I hope this finds you as well as you can be. Stay healthy, safe, loved. Love yourself. Love your art. Stay creative.